Hi everyone and welcome to this new episode of my series about how it works in Babylon JS. Today we're going to talk about um, a feature that was requested by a lot of our users, the skeletons, the bone, and all the weighted animations. Okay, so you know what? Let's dive in. Right, so here I have my tiny presentation um, that I built for you just to have some support when I'm going to explain what skeleton and, and uh, bones are. All right, <clears throat> so here is a tiny schema representing what a skeleton can do on a mesh, right? So on the left, you have a skeleton, which is in what we call a T pose because it's like T, right? And this is where the, um, the mesh is actually not animated. It is created this way into any of your tools like Blender or 3ds Max. When you apply a skeleton onto a mesh, you get a um, morphed, a animated version of it. For instance, here you can see that the white lines are a representation of the skeleton, and this skeleton will actually apply a deformation, a transformation into the mesh, right? So, you know what? Let's have a look at the demonstration that I have right there. This is a uh, moving uh, skeleton, right? Applied to a mesh. If I look here in my inspector, I can see that I have some meshes, like my skin here, I can turn it on and off, right? And this mesh is, is actually using a skeleton. You can see that here. If I click here, I'm gonna have the list of my skeleton. A skeleton, in a nutshell, is just literally a hierarchy of bones. And a bone, in that example, is just responsible for one single thing to produce a wall matrix. So here, if I take out of the equation my skeleton right there, let me just turn off for a few seconds, sorry, the skeleton animation, which is right there. I have my base mesh, okay? So there is no animation, no skeleton applied to it. It's one single mesh, as you can see here, and there is just, it's just a regular mesh, right? As soon as you apply a skeleton, a deformation on top of it, the skeleton animation will actually um, control how the mesh will be deformed. And here, interestingly, we have some tools in Babylon JS to let you understand a little bit more how it's working. For instance, if I pick my mesh itself, I can go down right there and turn on the bone weight. Here, I can see that most of my mesh is black, but a central piece here, which is red and with some colors. This is because I am taking the spine one bone, which is part of the hierarchy, okay? And I see his influence, okay? So that bone will apply his wall matrix toward the specific vertices we can see here on the screen, okay? And if you take another bone, for instance, spine two, it will apply to a, a different places. We get back to this equation soon. What I wanted to show you here mostly is like inside BabylonJS, we have a hierarchy of bones. All of them, right, are used to apply a specific wall matrix toward a specific set of vertices on your mesh, okay? And if we get back to the presentation right there, um, we can see that there are two kinds of way to do that in BabylonJS. The first way is to have a skeleton, a pure skeleton, which is a list of bones. And so you have a bone, that bone can have a parent, that parent can have a parent, up to the root bone, okay? And that hierarchy build a hierarchy of bones, all right? That's the default BabylonJS mode. To support GLTF, we also introduce a second way of doing that by this time having the bone as just linked to a meshes. So in the GLTF world, actually the bone are represented by meshes. If we look at another example that I have right there, this guy, this guy is a GLTF object that I loaded right there, where we have morph target, by the way, for the smile and all the facial expressions, and we have a bones animation for the rest, okay? If I look at my mesh right there, I see that I have a skeleton, for instance, alien right here, but you can see that every single bone is just a link to a node, right? And that node is a mesh, actually, right there. It's a transform node, precisely. It's just the only difference. Um, the way um, you can uh, think about it is that in this specific case, because it's a transform node, you can play with it, right? And move it live, and so say, oh, okay, because I have a transform node that I can manipulate, it's easier than just transform the bone itself. We also support transforming the bone, so obviously, but it's just a difference of philosophy, and Babylon JS support both. You can have a hierarchy of bone as pure bone, or you can have a hierarchy of bone are just 
intermediate between a hierarchy of bonds and a hierarchy of meshes, right? And it's always the same stuff here. You, you see that the hierarchy of meshes here is actually exactly the same stuff as what you have as a bond, right? And BabylonJS will know how to deal with it, right? So here I'm playing with the, the high or the neck or, what, or whatsoever, all right? Good. So let's go back to the presentation. How to apply a bond? What we need to apply a skeleton, the bonds, to our mesh, we first need the mesh, obviously, and here I have the attribute of my mesh. Remember, the attributes of a mesh are all the properties that are port that are on a vertex. Okay, so for instance, a default vertex will have a position, a normal, and a UV. Great. In the case of bone applied to it, we also need two additional information. First, every single vertex can have up to four um, matrices, four bones that will control his destiny, okay? So here you have indices I0, I1, I2, and I3, which are also stored as part of the mesh attribute. And each of these numbers are integer that will point to a specific matrix. So let's say you have a set of bonds. So this bond will then generate X matrices. And so you're gonna have matrix 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., as much as you have bonds. And these indices will just point, okay, this vertex is actually influenced by matrix number 3, 4, and 20, for instance. And then the weights are applied on the specific matrices. So this vertex is actually influenced by um, matrix number 1 with a weight of 0 0.3, by matrix number 13 with a weight of 0 0.6, etc., etc., okay? Just a side note here, BabylonJS support actually up to 8 indices and 8 weights on a attribute list, okay? It, but it's by default on four, but it can be moved to eight if you need it, right? Just having eight attributes, meaning that per vertex, you have to store position, normal, UV, eight indices and eight floats, right? So remember, we have a, a limit on attributes, hence why by default, we restrain the system to only four bonds per mesh, but it could be pushed to eight. And so with that attribute list and a list of bond matrices, at the end of the day, what BabylonJS will do is just go through the entire bone hierarchy, ask each bone, each bone, okay, give me your wall matrix, and I'm gonna store that somewhere. By default, like the morph targets, the bone, are, uh, the bone matrices are stored inside a texture. So we have a lot of uh, room to store as much as we need, right? If storing floats inside the texture is not supported, mostly on WebGL1, then we're gonna just fall back into using uniforms. The problem with uniforms is actually the same as with attributes. We are limited, right? So um, you can't have too much bonds in your system. By using a texture, you can have a complicated skeleton with thousands of bonds. That's not a big deal, as long as you are still limited by the fact that every single vertex can only be influenced by up to four or eight uh, bonds, right? And so the final matrices will be built this way in the shader. The shader will take the default wall matrix, and it will multiply it by one minus all the weights, okay? So how much do I take from the main matrices coming from the typos itself? And then I'm gonna add every single additional matrices weighted by the weight index, okay? So matrix ID one multiplied by W1, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So let's have a look at how it's gonna look like when we are running it, and we're gonna use for that Spector. So let me just bring, for instance, this one here. So here, let's turn on Spector on this example. All right. And I'm going to play the walk animation, for instance. Right. Here, if I capture a frame, you're going to see that the system will tell me, like, yeah, that's the shadows. I don't care about the shadow. Let's just jump here. Right. So to draw this, the attribute list will be the following one. There will be position, normal, matrix indices. See, it's a vector four, so four float, perfect. And matrix weight, vector four, four float again, that's gonna be um, considered as ins, right? And then we have another attribute a little bit later, which is the bone sampler, again, like the, um, uh, the morph targets, it's the texture containing on every single pixel, right? The, text, the matrices stored. So if uh, in this example, I don't know how many bonds I have, maybe 10, then I'm gonna store 10 matrices in that texture. So the shader will know, okay, for this specific index that I'm gonna read from my matrix indices here, I will apply a specific matrix weight to a matrix, that, a matrix I'm gonna read from the texture. All right. 
Reading the matrix from the texture, it's kind of easy actually. I just need a sampler, right? I am gonna read the texture, and here there is an, in an index, okay? We know that we need to read 16 float, okay? So we're gonna just move, because it's a vector for um, a texture, we know that we have to move four vector four per matrices, okay? And so in this case, I just move to the correct offset, and I just read, boom, the four floats, the four vector four, sorry, that will generate for me every single line of my matrices, ending up with 16 flood to read my matrices, right? And then we need to blend them, okay? And so the idea is the following one. If we have one influencer, we're gonna read from matrix and this one, matrix and x2, three, etc., multiplied by the weight indices, and that's it, right? We can go up to eight as I mentioned before. And as you can see, we are uh, using a smart system in Babylon.js, which is the smart shader. This defines here, I only define if you need them, right? And the, um, the good uh, outcome of that is that you're gonna always have a very optimized and very precise shader for your need, right? The system will only compile in the shader what is really required at the moment you execute the code. All right, almost done. So there is a just one uh, remaining question, which is, okay, that's cool. I can animate one uh, mesh with my uh, bond, but what about transitioning? And it's a big ask from the community. Like, how can I blend, actually, multiple state? Because if I have a character in my game, for instance, and I want it to run, at some point, I want it to run, but maybe there will be an action, and I want it to, for instance, walk or stop or be idle or fight, right? So the idea would be, how can I get the walk and for instance, the move left animation here to get a walk to left animation. Look at this example here. If, uh, for instance, I take this little one here, I have my, my mesh here, my skeleton, which is in a idle state, okay? What I can do is, okay, remove the idle state, get back, see? So there is no more bone influencing my mesh and I want it to move to walk, okay? And while walking, I would like to move it to run, so something like that. And as you can see, the system will slowly merge both. Another example here, not this one, is this guy here. I can play walk, as I am doing right now, or play left, okay? And moving from walk to left, even if it's a little bit quick, you can see that it's not a jump, it's a morph between both. We can control that using advanced features in Babylon.js that are here. You can say on the skeleton that there are animation property override, okay? And this animation property override lets you blend when you move from one animation to another. And I'm gonna just slow down the blending speed so you can see it happening, okay? So now let's go again. I'm gonna play walk, right? And then play left. And as you can see, the system is merging between both simultaneously. How is that possible? And actually, if you think about how it works, a animation is actually a list of matrices, right? And so what I want to do is move my system from one list of matrices to another list of matrices. And fortunately, matrices are very easy to mix. I can take 50% of the first matrices, 50% of the second matrices, add them, and that's gonna work because they are associative, right? So I can here play the blended version of them, right? And that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so remember, left is one set of matrices. I ask my bones, okay, give me the left animation, and they will just give me a list of matrices. We're gonna call them M1. And then walk. Walk is also a, a new set of matrices, another one, which is the same size. Let's call it M2. If I want walk left, what I want? I want half walk, half left, right? And so it's easy. We take M1 multiplied by 0.5 plus M2 multiplied by 0.5. You're gonna get a new set of X matrices, and guess what? They are the mix, the perfect mix, 50% of each animation. And so moving from one to the other is easy. At the beginning, you take 100% of M1 and you add 0% of M2, and slowly you move to 0% of M1 and 100% of M2, right? Pretty easy. From the code standpoint, what you can do instead of starting a direct animation, there is an API in Babylon.js named begin weighted animation. It takes the same parameter as any regular animation, but in this case, it asks you, okay, what is the current weight you want to apply on something? And here I say, I want 50%, 0.5 on the animation walk range from two, okay? 50% 
from two on the left range. And then I can call a, a method named sync with, and I start left and sync it with walk. And automatically BabylonJS will understand that it has to blend them both be before applying it to the skeleton. Okay, so let's just conclude with that and look at how it looks like from the code standpoint. So here, let me just bump the font a little bit so it's easier to read. See, we have our two animation. But more interestingly, I think, if you play idle here, you can see that I am getting all my um, my ranges. I ask the system, give me the range for the animation idle, walk, etc. So idle range here is a from and a two, okay? Out of that, I can create animations. Uh, and for instance here, I want to play begin animation, that's the regular one, height from N2, okay? And because I am using that override here, instead of simply jumping into the new animation, the system will automatically do for you the blending. It will take the current one, not stop it, just slowly reduce the percentage of this, of this uh, current animation and replace it with the new one. And so out of nothing, you out of nowhere, I mean, very easy, no, almost no code, you can get a automatic blending and you are just to say, okay, play walk, play run, play left, see, and the system don't just jump into the new one, they, it will automatically merge, right? Another example, just before uh, we conclude here, uh, it's this one. So remember, we have here a control to say, I want work, see, and less work, and the more idle it is, right? And so a, a bit of work and a bit of run simultaneously, just weird, right? <laughs> and let's add a bit of that as well. So here we have something very, very weird where I try to jump and run simultaneously. Um, here, what we do, uh, we can start weighted animation with a specific set. For instance, I start idle, walk, and run. The first one is at 100% and the two others are at zero. Interestingly, you can change the code at any point in time and change the weight. And so as soon as your animation is started with a weighted mode, you can change the weight value and say, okay, it was one and now I want to move it to 0 0.5. And dynamically, BabylonJS will still run the multiple blended animation together while you change the weight, all right? But remember, at the end of the day, it's only a list of matrices that are sent to uh, the shader and shader read that from a texture and apply them, right? All the uh, secret sauce, the magic happens when we can merge the texture, the matrices between them. That's it. Thank you very much. I hope it helps you understand all matrices, bones and skeleton work in BabylonJS. Do not forget to subscribe and see you next time for a new BabylonJS or it works. Goodbye.